dialogue was just ugh. We love some murder and revenge on this channel, so I actually... everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my November wrap up of part 2 for 2022. I read a total of 23 books this month. I talked about the first 10 in part 1 of the wrap up. So this is the last 13 books that I read. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book I'm going to talk about is Scream For Us by Molly Doyle. This one I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Quinn who finds herself at a Halloween party one night and while there she begins being groped by an unwanted guy. Suddenly a masked man and his two friends come and rescue her. The four embark on a wild journey to fulfill all of Quinn's darkest fantasies for one night only and it's like the story of that. I actually really enjoyed this and I went into it thinking I wasn't going to like it all that much. I ended up reading it in one sitting because I had so much fun while reading it. I thought it was going to be a straight smut book because that's what I've been hearing, but I also got some murder and revenge plot, which we love some murder and revenge on this channel, so I actually really enjoyed this. I don't think that the writing was particularly good or the best thing that I've ever read, but I rated this based off of pure vibes, so I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I had a lot of fun. Next up I have Dipped in Holly by Dana Isley. I actually read two of her other books this month as well, but this one I ended up giving a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this one follows Holly, who was just publicly broken up with her boyfriend of five years in a bar, and so she decides that she is going to have a one night stand with the bar owner Nick, but it just so happens that he may be turning into something more than that. This was fun, but the amount of times the word daddy was used in such a short book was infuriating. I will say, that there was very creative use of Christmas lights in this, but I am not the biggest fan of the daddy kink, so I was just a little put off by that. I really liked Holly as a character. I think that she was really sassy, which I can definitely appreciate. Not 100% sure if I liked Nick or not, although I did like the whole I take care of what's mine line, if you know, you know. I do think that Nick and Holly had a good connection and I liked their chemistry, but like I said, the daddy kink is not for me, so 3.5 out of 5 stars. The other two Dana Isley books that I read are part of a series. It is the One Night series. The first book is Games We Play. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. So this follows Jack who makes his living by playing games online and streaming it to his viewers while wearing a mask. People pay Jack to use his voice to make their darkest fantasies come to life. So when a gaming magazine sends a young woman named Quinlan to interview him, they are instantly drawn to one another and they decide to spend just one night together and it's like that story. This was another really fun quick novella. It is advertised as being very dark. I wouldn't necessarily categorize it as that but I do think that it had a fair amount of kinks that I would probably not be a fan of in real life but like to each their own. This is another one that I wouldn't say was necessarily great writing, but again, rating off of vibes, I had a really good time reading it. I read it in one sitting because I had so much fun with it, so 4 out of 5 stars. And then the second book in that series by the same author is Secrets We Hunt, and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows one of Jack's friends, Wes, who is attending a wedding in Greece when he sees a girl in the crowd that looks very familiar. He ends up following this girl into to the crowd and discovers that it is his long lost best friend from childhood, Zoe, who left him eight years ago without saying goodbye. I'm usually a sucker for second chance romances and I mean throw in friends to lovers and I'm a goner, but this one was a little bit off to me. I did enjoy that this was from Wes's point of view, the male, because I feel like a lot of romance books are always from the female's perspective, so it was nice to see inside his head. I don't think that the chemistry between these two characters was as great as the first book, which is why I'm only giving it three stars. There was just something off about it, so take that as you will. I definitely recommend the first one over the second one. Next up are three books from the same graphic novel series, the Lumberjane series. This is by N.D. Stevenson and the first volume is called Beware the Holy Kitten and I was not the biggest fan of this. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. 
The series follows a group of five girls who attend the Lumberjanes summer camp and things are not always as it seems at this camp. There are monsters lurking behind every tree. Every volume of this series is a different adventure that these girls go on. The first one just really didn't hold my interest which sucks because the reason I picked it up is because I've heard such great things about this series. I do think that the overall series would be great for younger readers and I think that it would definitely hold their interest and would be something for people who aren't the biggest readers. I did really like the girl power message of this and I do think the group of girls has a great chemistry and friendship, but this first volume, not for me. The second volume is called Friendship to the Max. I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars, so I mean it got better. This one included Greek mythology, which I took a couple courses in university about Greek mythology. I just find it very interesting, so I definitely liked that aspect of this story. I do really like the bright colors that this comic uses. I also really love how each girl in this group has such a unique personality. I will say that Ripley is my favorite though. She is just such a mess in the best way possible. I would love to continue the series just for more Ripley. Which leads me into volume 3 which is called The Terrible Plan. This one I gave a 3 out of 5 stars so we're getting better. This featured an art change which I actually really liked which a lot of people said they weren't the biggest fan of but maybe because I didn't hold such a high standard for the first two. Maybe that's why I liked the change. This one featured ghost stories at the beginning told by every single one of the girls which I thought was really fun because you got to see into each of their minds a little bit more. Ripley still my favorite in this volume but all of the girls do have a fun personality that you're getting to know as it goes on and we get to see into the budding romance of two of the girls in this one which was really cute. I think that the series is getting better but I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to continue on. Let me know down below what you think. Do you think I should continue or not? Because there's like 20 volumes in this series. The next book I have is Halfway Girl by Tessa Bailey. I ended up giving this a 1.5 out of 5 stars. I was not the biggest fan of this. This was my first Tessa Bailey book and I'm not sure if I'm going to be picking up any more if this is what her writing is usually like. This follows Birdie who is a freshman in college. She is currently rushing a sorority because she believes that this is what her late sister would want her to do. One night at a party she locks eyes across the room with a senior football player named Jeremiah and they have an instant connection and it's kind of their story. I hated this writing. I found Jeremiah and Birdie to be both extremely cringy and I just couldn't get on board with what they were saying to each other. Their insta love was just so annoying to me. Like it was ridiculous and like I said their dialogue was just ugh. I don't know if it's because this is technically like a novella for a different series that she has. It's like book 2.6 so maybe because I didn't read those other ones I just like didn't get it but not a fan, 1.5 stars. If you've read this series, like maybe skip this because it's not really worth it in my opinion, but next up is Falling for Jack Frost by my girl Molly Likovich. I hope I said your name right this time. I'm sorry, Molly. But I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Like I have said a thousand times, I will read anything Molly puts out. I find her writing so much fun, but this one follows Mary Ellery Lark. She has been told her entire life that she is destined to be Jack Frost's wife since the day she was born. So when he shows up on Christmas Eve to whisk her away and make her his wife, she is furious, but she cannot d deny the passion that she feels towards him, and it's like the story of that. Mary was such a slow grow character for me. She was very hard to like at the beginning of the book, but she does grow on you, and I did kind of grow pretty fond of her by the end. And like, it is understandable how she felt and her feelings were valid in her situation, but just that beginning I was like, girl shut up, you're getting railed, just enjoy it. I will say that you need to be aware of the content warnings that Molly gives because there are a lot of scenes where the consent for Mary is very questionable, so if that is a trigger for you, maybe don't pick up this book, but it is a lot of fun, so just be aware of the trigger warnings. 
The next book that I have is We Deserve Monuments by Jazz Hammond, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows 17-year-old Avery who gets news that her grandmother is dying. So her family uproots from DC to Georgia in order to take care of her until she's gone. She quickly realizes that the relationship between her mother and Mama Letty is very strained. As she spends more time in Georgia, she learns more about her family history and the connections that they have towards the towns and the secrets that are held there. I actually listened to this one on audio and I think that the narrator did an incredible job with these characters. I think that Avery's voice was so well done. I think that she was a very relatable character and I really loved Mama Letty and her complex relationship that she had with the entire family. I think that she was just such a complex character and I loved learning more about her and her history as we got more of the story. I think that there were really great conversations about generational trauma and the cycle of abuse as well as homophobia and racism in this novel. I also really loved the discussion of queerness and how it looks different for everybody. I'm also a big sucker for the girl next door trope, so I really loved Simone and Avery's relationship. I just thought it was so sweet. I liked how they had to grow together and learn to communicate with not only each other, but everybody around them. The book is sometimes sad, sometimes sweet, sometimes funny, but I definitely recommend it. I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up, I read The Tea Dragon Society. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. It was so stinking cute. This follows Greta, who is a blacksmith apprentice. She ends up stumbling across a tea dragon shop after she finds the shop owner's tea dragon wandering the streets. She is offered by the shop owner to learn the art of taking care of a dragon. Along the way, she befriends a girl named Manette and helps her regain her lost memories. This is a very cute read. I loved the artwork. I think that the dragons were just to die for. I loved how the book was broken up into seasons and it featured not only LGBTQIA plus characters but also differing skin tones and different disabled bodies which was really nice to see. I must say that I very much want my own tea dragon but if you're looking for like a very quick cute read. This is probably the one for you. Next up, I have Treads of Angels by Rebecca Roanhouse, and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. So this follows Celeste, who after the arrest of her sister Muriel for the death of a virtue, she takes on the role of devil's advocate in order to prove her innocence. Celeste is aided by her ex-lover, who is a demon lord named Abraxas, and she just quickly discovers that her sister has many, many secrets, and it's kind of the story of that. I found this concept to be very interesting and I was definitely intrigued, but I think that the ending was a little bit disappointing in my opinion. I thought that Celeste was a very intriguing character and it was very interesting to see how far she would go in order to protect her sister. I do think that the relationship between Abraxas and Celeste was interesting to say the least, but I do wish that they had a little bit more chemistry and I felt their connection a little bit more. I honestly think that if this was a little bit longer because it's like 190 pages or something like that and the author had the opportunity to flesh out these characters and the plot a little bit more. This could have been really great but it just fell a little bit short for me so three out of five stars. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for November 2022 is The Indigo Spell by Rochelle Mead. This is the third book in the spin-off series for the Vampire Academy Bloodlines. Um, yeah, I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. I read the first two books and I had an issue with the way that weight is talked about in this because I feel like this is a very young adult book, so there's a very impressionable teenagers reading this book, young girls who just don't need the message that, you know, you need to count calories, you need to be skinny to be loved, yada yada. And it was addressed a little bit in the second book, but then it came back in the third book. And I'm just like, why? Like, I do think that this story is very fun. It's intriguing. I want to know what's going to happen next, but I just wish that that aspect of the book was left out. Because like I said, impressionable teenage girls, young readers don't need to hear that. So I'm giving it a two out of five stars. All right, everybody. So those were the last 13 books that I read for the month of November 2022. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye!